food is not everything when it comes to health, but without it, everything is nothing. Welcome to our show, and we are so excited to share with you Nutrition Secrets. And this is actually the best solution when it comes to prevention, when it comes to reversal of diseases. We will be sharing with you some techniques on how to make your food delicious, at the same time nutritious, and at the same time, our goal actually is not only for you old people to really appreciate the food, but especially our goal is for the kids. If the kids can actually love our food, definitely all of us can really appreciate the food. We all know that from the first dawn of life to its last golden sunset, all creatures should eat. From the largest to the smallest, each creature has its own specific diet. Look around. The elephant has its own diet. You know, the birds have their own diets. You know, the, um, the butterfly and the bees have their own diet. Man also, man also has his own diet. And in general, we have specifications in our diet. Let's try to see some of the diets for human being. Generally, we keep on saying that most people are omnivore. When we say omnivore, these people eat anything like meat, fish, fowl, along with plant foods like fruits, vegetables, nuts, and grains. No specifications. And sad to say, some people can even eat snake, huh? And sometimes frog. And these are omnivore. They don't bother so much on what kind of nutrients and what kind, what would be the effect to the body. But that kind of people can also change and that is actually one of the major goals that we have in this show there's another classification we call them complete vegetarian when we say complete vegetarian these people actually are eating plant foods they don't eat animal products like um, they only eat vegetables fruits nuts and grains and when we have this complete vegetarian, some people are saying that, hey, we are already on the um, most strict diet, but I personally salute to the complete vegetarian because they have chosen the right way when it comes to health. Complete vegetarians sometimes are, they, some people used to call them pure vegetarian, or sometimes they call themselves vegan. And they can enjoy their diet, but you know, it's hard to change, jump quickly from omnivore to vegan if you don't know or if your knowledge in nutrition is so poor. There's another classification that we have. We call it lacto-ovo-vegetarian. Lacto comes from the word uh, milk and ovo is egg. So meaning milk and eggs, of course, plus plant foods. So these are the choices for lacto-ovo-vegetarian. Um, this group of people also can enjoy their diet. And yeah, they have also wide variety of choices when they follow a lacto-ovo-vegetarian. Some people are following pesca-vegetarian. They eat fish. The word pesca means fish. So meaning sometimes it's lacto-ovo or maybe complete vegetarian plus fish. And some people are calling themselves still vegetarian, but actually they're not. They are called semi-vegetarian. They are the rare meat eaters. They sometimes eat meat, but hoping that the semi-vegetarian can be qualified as semi-vegetarians if they're only eating meat, not more than two servings of meat as big as this for the whole week, huh? Not for per day, it's for the whole week. The size of meat is this portion, two of this. Now, since man can subsist on any of this diet, why do we really need to talk about nutrition? Why do you really need to study nutrition? Because we know that nutrition is very important. Yeah, so let's try to see. Maybe some of you watching us, you would say, ah, maybe I want nutrition because I want to improve my health. Or some of you would say, oh, I'm sick and I need good nutrition for better health. 
Now let's try to answer your question and let's try to compare the difference between the carnivores and the omnivores. When you say carnivores, this group of people, uh, sorry, these animals are, examples are lion and tiger and domesticated cats. Now, you can see the canines, their dentures, so sharp dentures. The canines, they, they are really um, designed for really, really getting the flesh. When we say herbivores, these are the animals with rounded, cor rounded corners, molars. No? What I mean is the molars are really designed for chewing, biting, and pulver pulverizing foods. And these are the cows, you know, goats and maybe carabaos they have the the monkeys and you can see they are really for the plant foods they we call them the herbivores now the carnivores also have single stomach and short inter intestinal tract comparing it to herbivores they have long intestinal tract and you know it's really long and that is actually designed for eating vegetable and if you see the acidity of the stomach, the acidity actually for the carnivores, for the meat eaters, are actually three times acidic than the herbivores. So meaning God created them really to eat meat. This lion and the tigers and the, and the domesticated cats, they are designed to eat meat. And this carabao and cows are really designed to eat grass. Now, how about men? I cannot say yes. I cannot compare myself to herbivores. I cannot also in, say that I, I am like carnivore. But man is so special. I am so special. You are so special. God created you so unique. According to study, men, we have only, you know, our molars are so similar to the herbivores. We don't have canines, right? So when, you, when I smile, you can see really sharp, you know, the teeth, and it's really close-up smile. Now, we are created very similar to herbivores. Our stomach, we have single, single stomach. Our intestinal is longer than that of the carnivore, but not near as long as the herbivores. In fact, if you search on this, the study, Right now, there is some science that would say that the human body's digestive system is very close to those animals who are eating fruits. But again, I hate to make conclusion right now. I cannot say, yes, I, I, I am like herbivores. I don't like to say that because, as I have mentioned earlier, I am created special. God has given me the power to think intelligently. God has given you also the power to think intelligently. You know, the herbivores, they eat grass, right? Uh, they also eat uh, sweet potato leaves, right? You also eat potato leaves. But the, the cows, they only eat sweet potato leaves as in fresh and it's from the ground. But you guys, you can turn your sweet potato leaves in the best way that you could. Wide variety. I can turn my potato leaves into sweet potato leaves salad and sweet potato leaves with, with coconut milk and with sauteed sweet potato leaves. We have here in the Philippines the sinigang. Sinigang is so nice. We can turn that into laoi, into laswa. I can turn my sweet potato leaves in tempura. Watch our show. We have lots of recipe secrets here. We can turn our talbos ng kamote into sweet potato juice okay and then later on we'll show you some of the secrets and you will really be excited there are lots and lots of varieties for these leaves i can teach you to write recipes so easy so easily that you could actually plan ahead now let's try to examine some of the nutritional value like carbohydrates maybe proteins and fats and oils and we will be trying to see whether plant foods or animal products would give us this amount of nutrients okay let's start with vitamins and minerals um, it was part of history many years back the sailors hundreds of sailors died of scurvy 
because the sailor's diet before was just composed of dried sea biscuits, dried pork and beef, washed down with plenty of grog and beer, while the lack of fruits and vegetables caused passengers and crew alike to suffer and die from scurvy. So this was the history of the seafarers. Those um, of you who have, you know, relatives, seafarers, relative, the seafarers right now are so blessed because they have better diet than before. And so hundreds of the seafarers died of scurvy because of that kind of diet, no vegetables and no fruits. And it was Dr. James Lind who discovered that by just adding lemon or orange a day, wow, they were able to save hundreds of sailors from scurvy. And later on, they discovered that it was vitamin C in these oranges and lemon that had cured the scurvy. Amazing. They say vitamin C is really vital to health. And if you see right now the food of the sailors, you can now see good improvement. You know, you, they can now have their vegetables with them. They can, have, they, they can now have their oranges and their lemons and some of the fruits. And they can plan ahead. Uh, yeah, they have, they have limited uh, when it comes to leafy vegetables, but they can preserve many of the vegetables in the freezer. Yeah, there are some vegetables that can be, can be kept in the freezer, like carrots and, and broccoli for those people abroad, uh, the beans, and maybe some of the non-leafy vegetables can be stuck in the freezer. Yeah, don't worry. The nutrient value, the nutrient content of the stable nutrients are still in there. The only problem are some nutrients that are so sensitive to very low temperature, like vitamin C. So for vitamin C, you have, they're now taking it from the fresh oranges and sometimes from the fresh juices uh, or fruit juices, rather. So it is now possible for us to be healthy. Now, that is for the sailors. But for you guys, especially the Filipinos or the Asians, oh, we are really blessed because it's not just the orange that we can have. It's not just the lemon, but we have lots and lots of indigenous vegetables. And we can, indigenous vegetables and indigenous fruits. And we can have it perfectly. That actually, it's not just the, it's not just the fruit it's not just so, it's not just the taste of the orange, like the taste of the orange or the lemon, but we have unique varieties of taste. Like you try to eat uh, rambutan, wow, that's delicious, my favorite. Uh, chico and atis, and we have lansones. Ah, I love lansones. We have also mangustin and marang. But again, uh, part of our goal is really to serve the kids. So every time that we're learning on nutrition, we keep on remembering the kids. And yeah, we can be successful feeding them, especially if we know the art. The art is make your fruits, make your presentation beautiful. And today I have special for you. I have here the regular pineapple and... Some of you would be looking at this pineapple, and it's so easy to prepare this one. All you have to do is you, ha you need to have a sharp pear knife. You cut the, your pineapple maybe into quarter or into, into several parts. Then you have to cut below. Now, don't worry if sometimes you cut the uh, ice, the mata of the pineapple. It has unique fiber. You can still eat the mata. Okay. But what I'm showing you here is not actually the pineapple. What I'm promoting right now is the toothpick. <laughs> because when you add toothpick to your pineapple, it becomes so special. So you mothers out there watching our show, please gather the toothpicks. And when you serve this kind of, the, of fruit, I'm sure the kids would really try eating this kind of fruit. Of preparation now you compare this pineapple to your regular way okay you used to cut the pineapple and then put on a plate that is not really colorful I doubt if the kids would really love 
tasting or even trying it. Now, I have here the toothpicks. This is actually available anywhere, this kind of toothpick. And um, in some of the grocery stores, you can have some decorative toothpicks like umbrella. There are some flag toothpicks. Um, there are some native toothpicks. You can even see some toothpicks that are that looks like um, lollipops and you can you can use all this by the way my umbrella toothpick here is recyclable you don't need to throw up uh, this one you have to dispose okay so dispose this kind of thing but the toothpick as decoration can be preserved you can still keep it in your drawers dry and then you know keep it keep, keep it good seal it and then you can still use this for future now making it beautiful is another way of you know uh, making our goal effective so i would advise go search for the toothpick and i'm sure you will really love the kids would really love this actually i had a research on kids now, when my kids were still young, they used to do part. They used to ask me to prepare food for, for the classmates, for the friends. And then finally, I started making a research on, on food. So I prepared a vegetarian buffet. And then I started, I started preparing it so nice with all the toothpicks, even sour pineapple. Oh, believe me, kids would really eat this, this sour pineapple. You know this, the... the uh, the upper portion of pineapple is the sours. This, this is the s most sour and it most it's not palatable really. And the sweetest is actually the last part. But believe me, no, they can actually consume everything when you decorate the, um, the fruits. So w if you will ask me where to put this kind of preparation, I have to put this on the first few... On the first few, you know, uh, section of the table so that kids would still have space in, on their plates. Okay, so this is the priority when you, you, when you try to set the buffet table. No, uh, so it's so amazing really because when I tried to make experiments for kids, so amazing. I used to measure the leftover and you know, it's almost zero leftover. And the kids were able to eat the pineapple and some of the fruits, even sour fruits, and some of the and, and, and all of the vegetables. And kids were able to eat unpolished rice. But the presentation is really something. So again, parents, mothers, try to make some decorations. And I personally believe you will really be successful in your goal. Okay, a similar scenario was repeated by the use of whole grains to treat beriberi and dark green leafy vegetables to treat night blindness. No wonder that fruits and vegetables and greens had been called the protective foods because this can actually protect us from diseases. Now, the issue right now is if this uh, whole grains can treat many of the sickness like beriberi and, night, and, and other uh, um, big complex deficiencies, how can actually how can we serve the whole grains to our family and we keep on shouting to our in our lectures that you need to learn how to prepare unpolished rice the problem with unpolished rice is sometimes in the cooking you you need to know the way the best way on how to cook your unpolished rice if the unpolished rice is really hard you have to soak it in water first now for beginners I am advising that you mix white rice initially. Wha mix white rice with your unpolished rice so that it will not really that be that hard. Or sometimes if you're using unpolished purple rice, uh, and I love that unpolished purple rice, really, really good. You have to mix it first with white rice so that later on you can say that, huh, that even the kids can actually eat and appreciate the softness of the rice. So you can have the red unpolished, the regular unpolished rice, and the purple unpolished rice, and you can have a wide vari variation of your unpolished rice. Um, yeah, the rice cooker is also, is also good when it comes to cooking because 
at first, it's a little bit hard, but you know, keep on reheating and reheating, and finally, it becomes soft. Okay? So that is how to be successful when it comes to unpolished rice. You can also create some strategies, um, cooking strategies like, you know, the unpolished rice can be enriched with rice bran. Sa Tagalog, the rice bran is, is the rock, but you can get in health store, no? The, the edible rice bran. And the rice bran can actually give you more B complex, the B complex and then the fiber content of uh, similar to unpolished rice. Okay, dark green leafy vegetables can actually heal so many sickness. And right now, you know, the Filipinas and even Asians are so blessed because we have lots and lots of green leafy vegetables. Okay, the native green leafy vegetables, oh, I love to shout to the world that we have malunggay, the horseradish leaves, we have saluyo, tonelogbate, and uh, sweet potato leaves, and kangkong, pechay, wow, name it, saluyo, and all this. Leafy vegetables are so unique, high in nutrients. In, in, in our next nutrition class no, no, so show, we will be showing you some of the nutritional value of our indigenous vegetables. Now, cookie rice, it's so easy to, to prepare uh, leafy vegetables. Uh, for the Visayan, all you have to do is just boil it and then sometimes you put tanglad and then you call it laoy or lasawa and wow, these are really delicious you know sometimes um, for the Tagalog region they cannot appreciate it because the taste buds actually is you know yung, um, they are very much into tasty foods but the Visayans are a little bit bland when it comes to taste the only problems in the only problem in Visayans is the salted fish but the vegetable cookery, yeah, you can do it good. So, I love lauoy and laswa because you, uh, there is no combination of vegetables. You can put any vegetables that any vegetable that you like. You can put sometimes the leafy vegetables and non-leafy vegetables together, and you know the family would really love eating this kind of vegetable with soup. So now we can say that. Fruits and vegetables can be the protective foods because this can protect us from diseases. And the uniqueness of vegetable actually is when it comes to phytochemicals. Now, when I was in the nutrition class way back, many years back, <laughs> they don't have phytochemicals in the book. We never had phytochemicals in our textbook when I was in the nutrition class. And it's so amazing. Because nutrition right now, the science of nutrition has already discovered so many things about uh, the protection that we can, from, we can get from plant foods, like the phytochemicals. The phytochemicals are plant chemicals. And the good news for you right now is you can get your phytochemicals to all of our plants. The uniqueness of phytochemicals is always attached to color. So it's so easy. Don't need, you don't need to memorize all the hard names of phytochemicals. All you have to do is eat a wide variety of colors. Sometimes you eat purple because the uniqueness of, of purple is different from red. And the uniqueness of red vegetables or fruits is different from, you know, different from orange maybe or white or brown or, or, or dark purple. So eat your colors. I keep on sh saying that, eat with colors. And then when you eat with colors, you will be sure that you're taking all kinds of phytochemicals. Now, the good news is, colors can show you the uniqueness of phytochemicals. But the best news actually is, the science of nutrition has not discovered yet the hundreds or maybe the thousands of phytochemicals. They have, they have only a handful right now. So, again, if you will be eating your plant foods from your fruits and vegetables, I am sure that you're taking the identified phytochemicals with the unidentified phytochemicals. You're taking two. You're taking both. Okay? Both the identified and, not, and the unidentified phytochemicals. And for sure, if you do that, 
you will really be you will really be safe when it comes to you know when it comes to insecticides and pesticides when it comes to s some not so good chemicals in other imported foods go indigenous because when you go indigenous you will be able to say we you will be able to take large amount of nutrients good amounts of vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and i personally believe that this strategy is always possible here in the philippines and not only here in philippines but also in asia uh, we have neighboring countries here and we have almost the same diet we have almost the same vegetables and fruits but the curry, cookery sometimes uh, we have our own uniqueness when it comes to how we prepare but again when we serve the plate now going back again to how how you can have good evaluation when you serve your plate when you serve the final food preparation look at the plate and the plate should actually be colorful that is actually the goal okay the plate should actually be colorful sometimes you cannot have all the colors but if you have um, so one or two colors for your breakfast another one or two colors for lunch maybe and another one or two colors for dinner I personally believe you can get a wide variety of protection but I what I mean here is it's the natural color from plant foods I'm not saying the artificial food coloring <laughs> so don't use food coloring use the natural um, colors of your fruits of your vegetables of your grains of your plant foods I personally believe when it comes to good nutrition the Bible has the best advice you know the Bible in the Garden of Eden they have the perfect food they have the best food God created the best indigenous vegetables and fruits in the Garden of Eden no no preservation no refrigeration you don't need to wash it with you know um, anti-insecticides anti-pesticides uh, liquid the Garden of Eden has the best fruits and vegetables and when God said and when God asked Adam and Eve to eat fruits and vegetables it has healing effect it has the longevity secret when God said the plants the plant yielding seeds next time we will be discussing seeds huh the plant yielding seeds that is the best food for you and that is your only food according to God I personally believe God has purpose in it and I personally believe it is not just one two three four five six seven eight nine ten reasons I personally believe there are thousands of reasons when God asks our first parents to eat the plant foods so those of you who are watching us you try to listen to the to the first dietary advice which is fruits and vegetables and nuts and grains and I personally believe you will really have the secret of longevity those of you who are sick right now those of you who are not feeling good those of you who are weak for a few days try for a few days just for a few days try fruits and vegetables or maybe very simple fruits and vegetables just for a few days and you will really feel better again those of you who are not really not really feeling good remove all the meat products in your in your plate remove all the animal products in your kitchen and stick with the original diet God has given us and I personally believe you will have the best solution so good food is not actually everything when it comes to health but without it everything is nothing <music>